The only reason I can be head football coach at the University of Notre Dame was I had set some high goals. Nice job, Dave. It all occurred in the year 1966 when I was hired by a young man by the name of Marvin Bass to go coach at the University of South Carolina. My wife was eight months pregnant with our third child. We spent every cent we had in the bank for a down payment on the home, and we went to South Carolina with great expectations. One month after there, Marvin Bass resigned to go to the Canadian League. And consequently, I was unemployed. At age 28, no money in the bank, unemployed, and your wife expecting her third child, that is a rather dismal point in my entire life. I don't think I've ever been any lower in my entire life than I was at that time. My wife has always been very supportive, but I'll always be deeply indebted to her because instead of complaining, she encouraged me. She even bought me a book. As I read about goal setting, he said, if you're bored with life, if you don't have a burning desire to get up and go do things in the morning, he said, the main problem is you don't have any goals. To really be accurate in goal setting, you need to take a piece of paper and pencil. Write down all the goals you wish to achieve. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I got out a pencil and paper. I started to write down all the things I wished to do. I wanted to go to the White House for dinner. I wanted to be on the Tonight Show. I wanted to see the Pope. I wanted to go to the various continents. I wanted to win the national championship. I wanted to coach at Notre Dame. I wanted to be coach of the year. I wanted to make a hole in one. I wanted to do a lot of crazy things. Jump out of an airplane, land on an aircraft carrier, go on a submarine. And next thing you know, I'm writing down those lists. I got 107 of them. And the more I wrote, the more excited I got. And I went to boy and I said, honey, look at this. 107 of those suckers, and we're going to do every one of them. She said, gee, that's nice. She said, why don't you get a job? <laughs> so we made it 108. And I want to tell you, my whole life changed. I've taken over five college situations. William and Mary. NC State, Arkansas, Minnesota, Notre Dame. I've never inherited a winning football team. We've never failed to take that team to a bowl game by our second year at the latest. Understand your purpose. What are you trying to do? All I'm trying to do is graduate our athletes and win. The grade point average in South Carolina has gone from a 2.05 to almost a 2.7. We had 22 seniors this past year, 21 of them will receive their degree by May. When I was at Notre Dame, all we wanted to do was graduate and win. Every decision I made was how can we graduate and how can we win? Not how can we put them in the pros, how can we keep them happy? For example, in order to win, I felt I had to have our athletes on campus for three years, so I made that a rule. Did they like it? No. But I felt that was important. Didn't make it just because I wanted to make it. But I also didn't let them live off campus because that's what they wanted. I felt for us to win, they had to be on campus and we had to be a family. That's why I made that decision. Would it help us win? Would it help them graduate? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not very smart. But all you're trying to do, you are not selling anything for a fee. All you're doing is satisfying the needs of the customer. Everything you're doing is satisfy the needs of the customer. And the only question is, how can I show them that we can satisfy their needs better than anybody else can? People complicate it. People were so busy running a railroad in 1930, they went bankrupt. Their job was not to run a railroad. Their job was to transport people from one location to the other. If they'd done that today, you'd have the New Haven Airlines, Pennsylvania Airlines. All I keep saying to our coaches, what are we trying to do? And I have common sense. That was obvious to me in the seventh grade. The only time I want to brag, I had a nun named Sister Mary Harriet. She didn't like me, didn't think I was very smart. Never forget we had a test. I didn't know a single answer. I started looking around the room out of boredom. And she looked at me and sort of embarrassed me from the whole class. She said, Lou Holt, don't you even think about cheating? She said, if I even suspect you're cheating, I'm taking 10% off your grade. I got out the textbook and I said, 90 sounds good to me. It really did. <laughs> but if we will just understand, what are we trying to do? See, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard me say this before. I sold cemetery plots. I never sold anything because I want somebody to buy a cemetery plot in order to help me. I didn't go solve anything. 
But if you can show them how you can help them, and I've got to tell you right now, I love to sell for others. Why? I talk to different people. You've won all kinds of awards because you got the best product. I got on the internet, and I, I mean, you won all kind of awards. You obviously have the best product. And it is easy to show that customer how they need your product. I wish I'd brought our football playbook. I wish I'd brought our football playbook, because when you look at our football playbook, which I give them, it's in color. I mean, it isn't multicolored, but I'm talking about the defense is in red, the offense is in black. It said, why? Why do we go that expense to do it that well, to have it professionally done? Because when those players opened up that notebook, they go, wow. I've never seen a notebook like this. This is really well done. I want our players to understand we're going to be the best we can be in everything we do. It was always easy for me to stress fundamentals. I believed in fundamentals, and I studied and learned fundamentals from some great coaches in the history of college football. I had difficulty, however, whenever I had to change. Change was not something I've ever been inclined to embrace. I think the same is true for anyone with strong opinions. Do it my way or don't do it all is what I've often said to myself. Most people don't want to change. I didn't want to change. When I was at Notre Dame, I didn't want to throw the football. It's not hard for the quarterback to take the ball and turn and hand it to Jerome Bettis or Ricky Waters. So when I went to South Carolina, I said, we're going to run the ball. And our quarterback took the ball and turned the hand, and Ricky Waters and Jerome Bettis wasn't there. And the guy was there and didn't want the ball. And we went on 11. Did I want to change? No, but we had to. The next year, we spread people out. We threw the ball all over the lot. Why? Because I had to change in order to win. I was called upon to go to the University of Minnesota. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have absolutely no desire to go to Minnesota. I'd never been in the state before. I don't like cold weather. And I noticed that every time I picked up the USA Today, Minnesota was always in dark blue. And everybody I'd ever met from Minnesota had blonde hair and blue ears, so I really wasn't real anxious to go up there. Now, they had a great guy up there, one of the greatest salesmen I've ever seen, a guy named Harvey McKay. Harvey said, man, you ought to come up here to Minnesota. This is the greatest opportunity you could ever have. He said, you can recognize an opportunity. He said, there's potential there. I said, give me an example. He said, do you realize that last year Nebraska only beat us by 10? Well, I was impressed because Nebraska has a good program. I didn't know he meant 10 touchdowns. We lost 17 straight games. The average score was 47 to 13. Now, the program went down not because of a coach. The program went down because the whole attitude became, well, we aren't going to win anyway. Eighteen months later, we had the opportunity to go to a bowl game. Now, the program came back not because of a coach. The program came back because of the attitude. Attitude doesn't start at the bottom and work its way up. Attitude starts with you and me. You and I are going to set the tempo for everything that happens in an organization. I went to University of Notre Dame. We took a program on the bottom, took it to the very top, and we maintained it. And then I left the University of Notre Dame. I've done a lot of dumb things, but the one thing I truly regret was taking Notre Dame to the top and keeping it there for 11 years. When I left the University of Notre Dame, I never thought I'd coach again. Where do you go from Notre Dame other than, according to my mother, you go directly to heaven, you sit by the Pope. You don't coach anymore. Then I went and did TV. I still do TV. That's isn't real hard. You just talk to you think of something to say. But ladies and gentlemen, there's a rule of life. You're either growing or you're dying. The tree's either growing or it's dying. So is a person. So is a business. And you get comfortable. There we are on top, and you say, let's keep it here. Let's not take any risks. Let's not jeopardize. Let's maintain it. 
And any time you try to maintain any phase of your life, you're dying. Because when you try to maintain, you never have any reason to celebrate. You never come up with any unique ideas. And when I left Notre Dame, I thought I was tired of coaching. I wasn't. I was tired of maintaining. And when I got out, I had that same empty feeling. Because you have to have something to hope for. 